in recent years, again in light of military intervention having a humanitarian purpose, such as in Libya in 2011, scholars have advocated a new way in which the use in Belo may allegedly influence the use at Belo. Proponents of this view argue that violations of the use in Belo may justify resort to force under use at Belo. However, this claim is difficult to support, either according to treaties or customary international law. Generally speaking, any resort to force cannot be made lawful merely by reference to its objectives. For example, by arguing that force is used to put an end to serious use in bail violations. Article 5, paragraph 1 of the UN General Assembly Resolution 33 and 14, which defines the notion of aggression, expressly provides that, and I quote it, no consideration of whatever nature, whether political, economic, military or otherwise, may serve as a justification for aggression. It is true that use in bello violations may play a role in triggering some existing use at bello mechanisms. This may be the case under the UN collective security system. There have already been incidents where the UN Security Council considered that a situation in which use in bello violations were occurring amounted to a threat to international peace and security. And consequently, it adopted sanctions against states and authorized to use force. This was, for example, the case in Bosnia and Herzegovina in 1992, where serious actual violations led the UN Security Council to adopt sanctions against former Yugoslavia. However, the decision on the part of the UN Security Council whether to take actions or not is a political decision. The, Sec the Security Council has a discretionary power with respect to identification of threats to international peace and security. Sanctions by the Security Council are by no means an automatic consequence of violations of the use in Bello. More fundamentally, the, S the Security Council is not devoted to sanction violations of international law, and use in Bello in particular, but rather to protect international peace and security. Some claim that states may also use force for humanitarian purpose on the territory of another state, even without any authorization of the UN Security Council and without the consent of that state. According to this perspective, states would have a right to humanitarian intervention. However, it is a very controversial position in light of both the existing legal text and current state practice. In contrast to the UN collective security system, such unilateral military intervention for humanitarian purposes does not seem to be established under the current state of international law. In order to avoid the dangers inherent in the notion of humanitarian intervention, advocates began to advance a new conception, Responsibility to Protect, or R2P. This concept emerged in 2001 and was endorsed by the UN in 2005. It is applicable in four specific situations. Genocide, ethnic cleansing, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. As we will see, war crimes mean serious violations of use in bello committed by individuals. R2P is divided in three pillars. According to the first pillar, states have the responsibility to protect their population from those four situations. If they are not able to do, to do it, the second pillar of R2P obliges them to ask and accept help from anybody else whether states, NGOs, the UN, and so on. If they are still unwilling or unable to cope with the situation, then, under the third 
R2P pillar. The international community has the responsibility to act, including using force. It is through that third pillar that it was aimed to reintroduce the concept of humanitarian intervention. However, it was clear that the action taken by the international community under the R2P third pillar had to be based on existing legal mechanisms. In other words, an authorization by the UN Security Council or more generally, the UN Collective Security System. Unlike the hard doctrine of humanitarian intervention, R2P does not purport to add anything new grounds for intervention under the use ad bellum.